Now, um, you talked about when you broke your back, but I wanted to bring that up too, because when you qualified, it was, it was oddly enough, kind of under the radar because you had broken your back. I think it was a pipe. Then you went on a little bit of a rampage and, and qualified at kind of that weird mid-year rotation point in 2011. My qualification was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> but this is something we've been talking about quite a lot recently because you can kind of contrast that to one of your contemporaries in Kolohe who qualified at the start of 2012. And Nike at the time was like pumping out these edits that were essentially anointing him as a title contender before he'd even put a jersey on at Snapper. And just like contrasting your experience with his experience, it felt like Kaloe had an immediate public expectation to perform. And even though he had a pretty respectable rookie season, he you know he made the quarterfinals in France, it seemed like the surfing world was pretty harsh on him because he wasn't winning CT events like out the gate and contending for a world title. What do you, what are your thoughts on kind of those different experiences? Um, yeah, well, like you said, my experience definitely felt like under the radar. It was not, it was the one year they did the half year mark. I think me, Gabe and Maggie qualified on that half year mark. And the only reason I qualified was because, uh, I was on a trip with Yaden nickel who was qualifying and he broke his leg. I think it was super badly on the trip we were on. And so he was out and I was the next person in. It's just this like crazy chain of events. And then, yeah, and I was in and it kind of just happened, you know, like it didn't really seem like a huge deal halfway through the year. First event is at lowers, just, the tour is just going on. And then Kolohe, meanwhile, it was, I think he won the QS season that year by kind of a good lead. I'm pretty sure. Right. I think Am so. Right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. And so, and then growing up, like Kolohe was, uh, the American, like, you know, I grew up against Kolohe, surfing against Kolohe since I was young and he won so many national titles and he was like this, like, he's, I mean, still is, he's like this golden American boy. Mm -hmm. uh, and he surfed so well, like he was like in the QS and the national things. And so I can see that being a hard thing to come into the CT and having all that pressure of like, like you said, Nike putting out these edits and everyone being like, okay, he's going to blow up. And then it's hard. It's so hard to compete when you get on tour. I don't know. At least, at least for me, like I, I luckily enough had it where I didn't have so much spotlight like he did. Mm. And, but I got on tour and I was like, well, wait, I have to serve against Kelly. Like I've been looking up to him since I was like a little kid. <laughs> like, I can't win these events. Like it's so hard to believe in yourself to win these events as soon as you qualify. Um, and so luckily enough, I had it without all that expectation and he had it with mountains of expectation. Well, and funny enough and kind of related, like part of that under the radar approach, whether it was by design or just kind of incidental that you had towards qualifying played into this general sense around the tour that a lot of people didn't really realize or appreciate how well-rounded you actually were. Like I, I distinctly remember a lot of conversations with the punditry where they were along the lines of like, well, geez, I really like John. I hope he gets a lot of conditions with barrels in these events so he can requalify, which in <laughs> hindsight is like super ridiculous. Um, and, you know, it's an, ignor it's an ignorance that, that you kind of likely shattered when you won the Billabong Rio Pro in 2012, largely on the strength of turns and kind of backhand rotations. Um, do you think that the surfing world pigeonholing you as just a barrel guy in 2011 was unfair or... Do you think that you actually made significant strides in your own performance in that time or, or maybe a bit of both? Um, I think I learned a ton as soon as I got onto the tour. Um, just trying to surf my best, trying to keep up with Gabriel. He was winning. He won like three events on that half year mark, which was crazy. Like um, we got off, we got off the QS and onto the tour and then he won. There was only five events left and he won three of them. So I was just trying I to think, I think you won too, but yeah, no, you, I think you won, two, you won whatever, Fra yeah. France and two. San Fran, but same thing. It's like, he wasn't same even thing. a full like, fledged rookie was, and came in and beat people. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Two events in a year period, you're like in a world title race, you know? And so I was just trying to keep up with him and trying to learn and, um, from everyone else on tour. And I think, yeah, when the bill, when the Rio comp happened, that was like a huge stepping stone for me and in, in the belief in myself, like, Oh, whoa, like I just want a CT event. Like, I can win these events. That's crazy. <laughs> now, when you say that you were trying to keep up with Gabriel, 
do you mean like competitive wise or psychologically or just were, were there things that he was doing in his surfing that you feel like you weren't doing in yours at that time? Um, I think competitive wise, like he's just mm. a machine of a competitor, you know? And I think even when we first through the QS and then first getting on the tour, it was just like, you could see it right away. He's so consistent. And, um, so I kind of naturally wanted to be doing that also. Yeah. <laughs> and so I tried my best and yeah. That's what it's worked out. Okay. Yeah. It's worked out. Okay. <laughs> All right, you mentioned this earlier because you guys came on tour at the same time, but at the start of last year in 2019, when you were coming back before you got hurt again, we were kind of treated to this dynastic superpower battle between yourself and Gabriel, who were both starting 2019 with two world titles apiece. Um, you know, to this day, does someone like Gabriel occupy more space in your mind than other competitors? And if so, is it a talent thing or an achievements thing? Like, like, does he, is he a little bit different to the rest of the field? Um, he's definitely a little bit different to the rest of the field. He's like I said before, he's a machine. And he's such an incredible competitor. And um, last year, I really was having fun, you know, like kind of feeding into that battle almost of like, okay, like uh, he's got two, I've got two, like I want to get a third before he gets his third. And yeah, I mean, I mean, that was exciting for me. And that was exciting. Like that was kind of like a driving force for me in a way. Last year, it was just like, I just want to compete my best. Yeah. And I mean, you were so far ahead before you were, you were pulled out of the race for injury too. And now, you know, Italo Ferreira has this radical title win in the final heat of the season against Gabriel. Did you watch that heat go down? And if, if so, what were your thoughts watching it? Um, yeah, I watched that go down and it was, it's so gnarly that have a title come down to the final like that. That's, I think that's the coolest thing. And one of the coolest things that can happen in our sport is to come down to the very last seat of the year at pipe for the world title. And um, it's amazing to watch, you know, you know, the pressure those guys are going through, especially in that situation. And so I just felt like I was enjoying watching it, thinking, <laughs> thinking about the stress that those guys are under. Well, and I mean, kind of what you've talked about too, it, it seems like you're, seeking out kind of unique experiences and conditions in terms of how is this going to change the way I surf? How is this going to sharpen the way I surf? And, you know, that, that experience of saying this is the final heat of the entire season and the world titles on the line is, is one that would be a new one, you know, for you. That would be awesome. Cause I mean, I feel like that's the extreme pressure situation that you can get to in, in our, in our sport. And so to be able to, get into that controlled mindset of not being stressed and just letting go and surfing your best. Um, I don't know. I feel like that would be the greatest achievement. So moving ahead as we all kind of continue to navigate this extended hold, where's your head at in terms of motivation in your surfing, like competitive or otherwise, like what's getting you through the day, the week and into this next space of, of being able to compete again, I guess. Um, so. I like went through this whole thing of training. Uh, I spent the last six months training, you know, to get up in the pipe and getting ready for the tour that we thought was going to start. And then, um, so this whole thing has been kind of on hold now and I'm feeling really good again, surfing. And so I'm kind of just taking this time to like, uh, I'm still focusing a little bit on the competitive side of it, but I'm, it's kind of more of a, I've switched it now. I'm just focusing on, having fun surfing with a little little bit of the competitive side rather than mostly competitive less having fun <laughs> not <laughs> that it's not fun but just less like free surfing if you know what i mean yeah um, focused so now i've just been having a lot of sessions which just going out and trying airs and going out and trying big turns and just enjoying surfing because i haven't had that this time to do that in so long it's been between injury resting getting ready for the next year. It's, it's always been such an ongoing thing. So I've just been kind of using this time to take a step back, let my knee, knee heal completely and just really enjoy having fun surfing. Well, rad. Well, I hope we all get through it and can't wait to see you back in there. Do you like that? Well, if so, 
subscribe over there, and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.